Well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are here on episode seven of The Last of Us HBO, the adaptation. Uh, this week titled Left Behind. I usually don't say the titles, but I remembered it. I wonder where that comes from. That Left Behind title, crazy. Uh, it turns out the DLC was a whole episode. I feel like we talked about that a little bit last week and whether or not that was actually going to be the case. It was the case. Cichlet has now appeared in the chat room. Incredible stuff. Right on time. Right in the intro. Right to fuck everything up. My goodness. These fucking Brits. Can you believe this? Um, but indeed, I did tweet very recently. Are we just jumping into it? We're just jumping into it. I did tweet very uh, recently, as in like last night when I watched the episode. I was a little late watching the episode, so this upload's going to be even later than usual. Incredible stuff. Uh, I did tweet that it was probably the best episode. Um... And I think that's probably true. What are we still saying? Like, three is the best episode? Is this episode only better because we're homophobic, chat? Well, male homophobic. Probably, huh? It's just not as relatable, hashtag. Even though they're both men, and I'm men, and these are women. Crazy how that works. Um... I guess it's because they're younger, too, is probably the relatability. And not some old man shit, like uh, with um, Bill and Frank. I don't know, we'll explore all of this as we progress. Um, But it actually was structured in a similar way to the Left Behind DLC, where you have some of it in the uh, present, right after Joel. Well, I guess it's in the past when the DLC comes. Uh, You understand. Um... (laughs) It's going to be one of those recording sessions. The, um... We have the little bit. We have the tie-in. We bookend the episode in the present. Uh, The non-gaming audience still on pins and needles. Whether or not Joel is going to die. My goodness. He's got three more episodes until he dies. All right? Everybody calm the fuck down. God, that's crazy. That's probably true, right? He's going to survive three more episodes, but four episodes from now he's going to be dead. Feels so different, especially when a game sort of exists for, like, what, seven years before the sequel comes out? So, I don't know. That's crazy. I didn't think about that at all. Unless he doesn't die. Now, that would be some cowardly shit. Um, but we do book bookend it. Is Ellie going to leave? Did anybody think she was going to leave? Did any uh, anime only here, which is what we'll call them? The illiterates who can't play video games. Um, did any of them think she was going to leave? Probably not. Um... But it works as a bookend or whatever. I'm not actually mad about it. Um, This is definitely going to be a shorter one because a lot of the goodness of the episode is uh, in the little details. Um, Huh, how do we tackle this? The, there was parts, especially towards the beginning, where I was like, oh, it's edging on being cringe a little bit. And not... Because there's different types of cringe. And I was actually thinking about this as I was watching it because, you know, I'm just so thoughtful. Um, I talk about part two being cringe on purpose in sort of a Mad Men-esque writing style where there are very awkward moments and very real human reactions to things that are going on. Um, And that sort of illustrates a a thematic point. Um, Actually, the only Last of Us video game related video on the channel, which was an... um, uh, originally a Patreon exclusive video that we then uploaded like we uploaded all of those. Uh, I can't even... Uh, it's called like a something. Uh, is it? Co- it's not called tentative thesis. It's called something thesis. The Last of Us and The Last of Us Part 2 or something. What a dumb name uh, for a video that was just made for Jockey Bake and what a legend he is. Um, where it talked about the dialogue differences between them. So you could watch that, I guess, is what I'm saying. Even though all those videos are bad because they're all old. Um... It wasn't that type of cringe. Uh, it was like, oh, we're trying to be good, but we're almost failing. But it always, it felt like, oh, they're tripping, but they never tripped over. Um, and remember I said this was my favorite episode at the beginning of this chat, right? Um, but the best part of the episode was the interactions. And I've repeatedly said this throughout the entire uh, series run, is that the little dialogue bits are the best part about uh, this show. Um, now, Left Behind, I don't know nearly as well. Um, as, um, 
the regular game. So the only line I remembered from Left Behind was the final one about poetic uh, losing our minds together. Uh, and that's the only line I didn't like in the episode because whenever they do do a line I know, they say it kind of wrong and it pisses me off. We've talked about this very personal issue I have with the show uh, in previous weeks. We don't have to rehash it. Uh, but yes, it did carry over. <sighs> but because... Uh, I didn't remember it. I don't just have left behind in my brain, like, uh, not on repeat, but I don't have it all memorized. I know it, uh, off by hand, um, off by heart. That's that phrase. Um, oh, there was no other line. So it was like in this episode's favor that I didn't remember as much because I wasn't cringing at anything. Uh, it's not cringing. It's just hearing it be said wrong because it's not like my video game. Um, they did cut Brick Fucking Master, which I think is, like, the biggest meme from this game, besides, obviously, the kissing and stuff. The kissing and stuff. Gross. Um. It is interesting, the placement of this. Um. Because I watched the Normie's reaction. Thank you, I did my service. Thank you, it was the greatest uh, video of all time, as they always are. Um. And I remember um, uh, basically everybody that hadn't played the game that was watching it, which I think was Chris and Marquetta and maybe Runner, though I can't always tell. Um, they were sort of complaining that it was it felt a little fillery, like, oh, nothing really happened in the episode. because the, and, and I think that's part of the point. It's sort of like when you... Uh, it's kind of like episode four... No, episode nine of season four of Game of Thrones, where it's like Tyrion's going to be put to death, and then you cut to a whole episode on the wall, and you're like... This wall episode is cool, but it kind of undercuts everything that's happening here because you're just like, man, I really wish Tyrion would show up so we could get some progress on that plot. I think that's how they felt, where it's like, we just want to know if Joel's alive or not. Um, which this episode was not interested in answering. Um. <laughs> the... You can understand from a theoretical standpoint what the point is supposed to be there, right? Oh, they're going to be so on edge to see it that they're going to wait another week and they're going to be even more on edge. I feel like it never works. I feel like there is one other example I've had from something besides... See, I watched season four of Game of Thrones. Uh, it, it had already come out when I was binge-watching the show in, like, 2015 or whenever I was watching it. So it was literally, like, just an hour later for me. And even I felt the drag. I'm like, oh, this fucking dumb ice shit. The wall, the worst part. Well, now... Um, uh, and... I looked down at Cichlid's fucking chat message and I lost my composure and I completely forgot what I was saying. It makes you hate the wall shit. So I could see why people might dislike this. But this is more interesting than anything that's going to happen with Joel now. Uh, what would you rather be? Or a wasp? Ha 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 ha. Alright, it was a pun, so I guess it's kind of on... Um, it's kind of on brand here. I feel like that can't be the case because the flashback in Ellie's flashback in Ellie's backstory is to show why she can't lose Joel like Riley. I get that, but that's like some dumb thematic shit. We hate themes. Everybody hates themes. We just pretend on YouTube that people like themes. Themes fucking suck. Uh, nobody cares. So yeah, sure, that's the thematic thing. But like, if this wasn't shown, like, and I actually thought about this. Now, this is my favorite episode, chat, even though we're shit-talking it. Um... Like, nobody needed this. Like, again, there's no tension there that, like, well, Ellie's just going to leave Joel, bro. Like, I feel like if it's supposed to establish that she finally cares about him, I feel like the audience already understood that. Even though my critique last week is that their relationship doesn't feel very well fleshed out and, like, I don't understand. Or we haven't seen a lot of why they would actually care for each other, at least not as well as in the game. I was also thinking about that while I was watching the episode. I think about these things while I watch the episode. It's incredible. Um... I still do think the game is better. Um, and we always, I think, I feel like we do this back and forth. Is the game actually an 8 out of 10? Is the show then an 8 out of 10? They're probably both 9 out of 10s. So I feel like we've gone through that dialogue tree like three times in the last three reviews. But anyway. Um, yeah. So fuck that stupid thematic shit. That's what we know. Uh, why don't you wear... Why don't you wear Ukrainian underpants? Because Chernobyl fallout. Is Chernobyl in the Ukraine? I don't know. I know nothing about Chernobyl, really. I know it blows up or something, and there's a TV show about it, and the dude that made that TV show is now making this TV show. Um, and that's all we know about that. 
So I don't have enough cultural context to understand the pun. Cichlid, try again. Um, so yeah, I guess we were complaining about some things. What? How do you even explain what you like about an episode like this? You just go through all the little moments. We get binge up. We scroll through it and go, man, that was pretty fucking sick. Um, the little hints that they're both into each other were very teenagery and very good. Um, all the little interactions are so good. They're all druckmanized, chat. They're just on another level. Just the best writer of all time. Besides those madman fellas and women's. Um... Uh, the... Because the first hint... what The first hint, I was just thinking about it, but I forgot it. Because it's actually before the lingerie moment. Um, and it's a Riley thing. Fuck, I can't remember it. No, maybe the first one is the Riley thing. Where she talks about uh, imagining you in this and then we laugh. And then Ellie fixes her hair in the window or whatever. Um, I, I really don't remember Left Behind much, as I've said. So I wonder how they sort of hinted it throughout in Left Behind. Is Riley also way older than her in Left Behind? She's obviously way bigger in this, but, uh, like, Bella Ramsey is shorter than Ellie's supposed to be. Uh, I've never thought of Ellie as sort of short. Uh, She's actually kind of tall and lanky. She's super fucking skinny in that second game. Um, And one of my big points about the second game is that she's, like, the sort of masculine role in her relationship. And Abby's the feminine role in her relationship... But my god, one of them's skinny and one of them's... Oh my goodness. Can you believe it? Thematic paralleling and contradictions. Incredible stuff. Um, when's Abby gonna show up, kings? Um, but yeah, that was interesting. I don't remember if Riley's 17. I feel like it could be. I also don't remember if it was like her last night in uh, Boston. That It probably was in the game. I really don't remember anything. I do remember the kiss scene. I do remember the bite scene. Um, and I remember some of the gameplay sequences. I remember the mall stuff. I remember Brick Fucking Master. I remember going to all the the wonders of the mall or whatever they're called. Um, but the little details, I don't really remember that much. Um, I also think this episode probably will lessen, and they might just... No, they will probably keep it. The line at the end of the game or at the end of the show with, um... Ellie telling Joel about Riley and it's sort of cool in the game where it's like kind of somebody you don't really know anything about and Ellie's just opening up and it's like mysterious and therefore it like gives you that inkling to want to know about it which the DLC would then scratch um sort of nice narrative propulsion of why you would be interested in such things which is what I used to complain about in the old scripts about doing Golden Age before Black Swordsman because why should we care because there's no narrative propulsion forward There was a different phrase I used to have. Um, But I can't remember it now. Um, I was just thinking, because I'm scrolling through the beginning of the episode, the Bethany stuff, remember the name, watch me go. Um, I think it's a great little dialogue moment, just so druckmanized, you know? Um, Where uh, Riley's like, tell me their name and I'll fuck them up, and Ellie has to point out, no, I already fucked them up. Uh, they got 17 stitches or whatever, which is a lot of stitches. It might not have actually been 17. It might have been like seven, but I was like, man, that's a lot of stitches. Oh, there was a stitch moment at the end, chat. I was having flashbacks to my hand. Uh, crazy. Um, that's That was the highlight of the episode, the emotional core. I was flabbergasted and shocked. Um, oh, did you see the, the policeman at the beginning had a little Naughty Dog logo on his fucking, on his fucking keys? That was pretty cool, bro. Um, it was interesting because you have seen this show, this scene in a million different things before where it's like the principal telling the kid, man, you're really gifted. You could be a leader one day. Um, and it was kind of a play of those types of scenes. And I thought that was clever. Um, I do remember the scene in the game of, of Riley coming into the room and everything too. Um, Uh, By the way, I don't know how it is in the game, but I feel like Fedra's morality isn't being conveyed too well. Lots of characters call them evil fascists, but we really don't see them doing anything that bad. Well, they have, like, a curfew, and they, like, beat you up if you're past curfew, and we see them be very corrupt. Um, I don't think they... Do they ever say fascist in the game? I don't think they do. I think that's definitely a new addition. But part of the point is sort of that 
it's kind of like they even have this sort of both sides uh, dichotomy in the episode where they're both making fun of each other for falling for propaganda or whatever. Um, and I think th- the fascist thing is more like they have very strict, like it is literally martial law and they have all the power. So that's pretty... Uh, is that pretty definitionally fascist? Because fascism has to be like right wing, right? So it's like very bad. What there's? A, I feel like there's another term for the sort of uh, societal structure where the military has all the power, um, and I don't think it's just fascist, but that's what they're getting at. Um, are you a rational egoist like Destiny? It's just authoritarian. No, there's definitely a different word. Um, and also, we're not talking about a dumb Destiny during this stream. What is Cichlid doing? Shut up, Cichlid. Authoritarian is inherently right wing and only right wing. Well, I don't know if there's anything right-wing about these idiots. They're all hooked on drugs, all right? And the right-wing hates drugs. They're going to ban them all. But I guess they did ban them, huh? Anyway. Um, we did see the... Well, we saw the... Um, where was it? It's, it's not Salt Lake City. That's the end of the game is there. Kansas City. These fucking American names. How am I supposed to keep track? Uh, we did see that they were really bad. Um... But yeah, I think actually a big loss for the show, and I think they kind of wanted to not give this much detail because it's never really important again, is in the opening credits, which is like after Sarah dies because Lamau, cool. Um, there's like a an informational montage of like how society collapses and sort of like government rule. And it's like, with the bureaucrats out of power. I remember this fucking thing, because I remember everything from this game. But it's sort of like a minute and a half of just going through the slow decline of things, and then the Marlene comes in and starts doing a thing, and 15 more Fireflies were executed, and now this and it sort of breaks down what's happening. It does be like, man, Fedra kind of sucks now. I love the Fireflies. Because the game definitely goes with that more at the beginning, where it's like, oh, the Fireflies are the good guys, obviously, and then we fucking kill them at the end. Uh, don't you feel bad about killing the good guys just to save one girl? Crazy. Doom and humanity? Crazy. Spoiler alert. Um, so, yeah. I think, well, obviously, part two has a lot of, like, both sides are bad, obviously, uh, type shit. Um, though both sides really aren't the WLF and Jackson. It's more like Ellie and Abby's side. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely been carried over to uh, what we're covering of the first game here. Um, but yeah, are we going to scroll through and say little moments are cool again? She's reading her comic books. We get the, is the Walkman in the, yeah, the Walkman is in the game, right? Yeah. Cause now I'm remembering part two moments with it. Um, oh, and they played take on me on the stairs, Lamau, cause that's the last of a song now. I guess it will make the uh, part two scene, which they're obviously going to adapt at some point, where she sings to Dina, uh, probably more impactful, I guess, because it's been contextualized inside of the Last of Us universe. Um, though I kind of like that it comes out of nowhere, and it's just sort of like, what an in the game, it's like, oh, what an odd choice for a song, crazy. It's like they, they actually sing Take On Me. Huh, interesting. And it's just like, ah, oh, so good. Um... The dude falling through the floor, that was good. He killed himself, saved up his good alcohol to kill himself. Uh, based. Um, we do know The Last of Us loves killing yourself, all right? That was the big problem with episode three, remember? Um, all the little moments. Them, like, not being able to be serious or nice to each other. They were just fucking with each other the whole time. Hashtag relatable. And then they finally break the... They slowly break down the, the walls and get drunk and... Oh, she's lying on her for too long and something, and then it finally builds up. You've seen the fucking episode. Um, oh, the, the mall stuff as a location is cool. Obviously, the escalator is funny. Um, it is interesting that, like, now Mortal Kombat wants to work with them because they're getting a big HBO show, but we had to have a Mortal Kombat ripoff in the uh, original game. That's kind of cute. I'm sure that feels good to... Uh, finally have gotten their attention if you're a, a, a naughty dog Druckmanite. Um, uh, 
Oh, and they combined the mask part with the dancing part, which is fine. Oh, there was a point where I was like, I can't remember what song they kissed to, and I'm like, I probably know the song now, and I didn't when I was 15 and I played this fucking shit for the first time. So I went to watch the scene uh, before it. And uh, I did recognize the song, but uh, it wasn't like uh, one of my... uh, it's not on the playlist or something. It's not one of my favorite songs, so whatever. I'm like, take on me, even though I don't have the original take on me on my phone either. Just the Last of Us versions, the better versions. Um, cutting away and not showing Riley die is interesting. I can't remember how they do that in the DLC, because I do remember it being like sunset and them sitting basically here and having this conversation. Um, oh, another great moment was Ellie destroying all the shit while Riley didn't, sort of showing that Riley kind of has more self-control, even though she seems like the one that beats people up, but she seemed to have always been doing it on somebody else's behalf, seems to be the implication, because, um, like, she, when, earlier when she wants to fuck up Bethany, uh, it's because she did something to Ellie, um, whereas Ellie's just got an aggressive streak in her, and she does end up stabbing that bloke in the head. I guess that's what she meant by not the first time she's killed a person. But these fucking zombies don't count as people, alright? Um... I feel like it's another kind of... And even Ellie, like, storms off and hits the bin. Um... And I was like, oh, this is, like, continual characterization to sort of make Ellie a little crazier or a little more angry. Uh... Pre-part two. Um... And that ties into the thing again, another thing we've been saying the whole review series uh, about how they're sort of nailing some aspects of Ellie, but kind of, it seems like it has to be intentional at this point, leaving out, like, the the nicest stuff with her, like, the the, the kindest stuff or the, um, the sort of innocent stuff, which is interesting. Um, they're probably not preferable. Um... How long have we been talking about this? We've only been live for 29 minutes, so we probably haven't even hit the 20-minute part. Let's scroll and look for cool moments. They're on the merry-go-round. The no-you're-drunk thing when Ellie's clearly drunk was cute. Um... Oh, another cute aspect of it that's that's uh, reiterated on throughout the episode is that Riley sort of has planned this all out in her head, and she's like, yeah, I'm the asshole that spent, like, an hour yesterday trying to break this thing open with the coin machine. That was really cute. Um, uh, that endears somebody to you if you do that, chat. Take notes. Um, oh, and obviously the creepy shot where they, like, show the infected is cool. Um kind of weird but cool um i was gonna say kind of out of nowhere but that's not really it because even if you don't know what's happening there's obviously a lot of foreboding dread throughout the entire episode especially when you realize it's a flashback and ellie's gonna get bit in the skull (laughs) ellie isn't like sad that she left riley behind the whole time so she's got to be dead um and it is such an interesting creepy implication when you cut away at the end and, like, what that whole see scenario must have been like for Ellie is she's not losing her mind, but Riley is. And watching that happen, crazy. Unless the implication is that she had to kill Riley. I assume she just ran away, but maybe she did kill her. I don't know. Um, I feel like for whatever reason, we see more of it in Left Behind. I have this inkling of a memory. Um, uh, I probably could have looked all that up before we are. Uh, started recording but these are no effort fucking videos can you believe that i moved the microphone that might have been bad in your ears for a second um anything else to say Hmm, hmm, hmm. um i think the the build up to the kiss because they had they had like i think two other moments where it was like oh they're looking at each other and they're close is it gonna happen uh and it didn't uh, only for it to happen later. But, like, the giggling afterwards and sort of the relief of, like, oh, I didn't do something bad, did I, or whatever. Um, especially from Ellie's perspective is, um, very cute. And obviously when you get the tracking shot of her storming off and it passes the lingerie store again, uh, that was clever. Um, little moments, you know, let's just scroll through and talk about them all. Lamau. Um, 
I don't really know how else to verbalize why it's the, my favorite episode besides that shit. The build-up was very good. The payoff was very good. Um, and next week, we get this David bastard. I did watch the preview again. We did see Troy Baker in it. Um, Ashley Johnson, I guess, is not... Um, <laughs> Ellie's mother? Because I, I always heard that she might have been or something, or that they... I knew that they were both in later episodes. So I'm like, oh, one of them's probably the Ellie flashback episode, and maybe that's how they'll put Ashley Johnson in it. But maybe she's just a David follower. Um... I wonder how pr- pronounced they'll make his potential pedophilia. That'll be interesting. Um, now, from the preview, it seems like they're adding some sort of religious angle to their cult, which I... or well, I don't know if it's a cult, but they're a fucking gang. They're cannibalistic gang. Um, it's in the snow. There's cannibalism. There's stupid religiosity. They're trying to copy fucking Fire Punch. Can you believe that? Um, I don't know. Something about that makes me groan. That they're adding a religion angle to it. Because there really is no religion angle in the game at all. It's just sort of like a group. And David is an interesting character. And he's kind of erratic. And um, You get that Ellie scene? <laughs> Where she says... Tell them Ellie is the girl that is the little girl that broke your fucking finger. That's a great line. Uh, I'm sure they'll do that, and I'll cringe because it'll be different in cadence and tone. Probably not tone. Um, but yeah, um, the relig- religiosity angle, right? What are we trying to do here? We trying to be Far Cry Five or some shit? Um, I'm sure it'll all work in. There'll be some thematic resonance with it. Um, Seems like Joel is going to be his second in command, just like uh, Tommy was Kathleen's second in command. Um, does that mean Ashley Johnson is going to be Marlene's second in command, and we're going to keep the uh, the train rolling here? Could be, possibly. Which moral framework do you prescribe to? Because I shout up Cichlid, he's pissing me off now. But anyway, um, I think that's where we're going to end it. The preview kind of sucked, huh? Nothing in it. Just a bunch of David bullshit. Like, I'm supposed to care. My goodness. I want to see Last of Us Part 2 likes. There's going to be no Last of Us Part 2 anything next episode. I'm furious. Um, With that being said, we'll be back next week, I guess. Uh, Exciting, fun. Let's see how the show lands. Uh, We're going to get the... I wonder how much of the axing on the head with the fucking machete we're going to see. Will Ellie have to crawl uh, uh, crawl and avoid uh, broken plates in that diner? That's the real question. That's that's a scary boss battle. Um, Last of Us having a boss battle. How ridiculous. Um, is there another boss battle in The Last of Us? The big fucking infected that Abby has to fight, obviously. Um, and there's like mini bosses when you get like a big uncharted enemy. Like the dude when Lev and Abby are trying to flee the island. And Abby's got to fight a few big fucking girls and boys. That act as sort of mini bosses, but I think that's probably the only other one. Anyway, we're ending, chat. That's what I'm trying to do here. We'll be back next week for The Last of Us Episode 8. I don't know what the subtitle is or the title. It's not a subtitle, it's just a title, chat. Um, support links in the description below. Thanks.